Welcome back to season four of the crossover with Joe R. Lucas. We're a bit delayed this year, but don't worry. This will be a season full of incredible interviews with the best that the Turkish Airlines Year League has to offer. And there's no better way to start than with my next guest. This guy has a great story and I cannot wait to hear it. Born and raised in Greece with a few stops in Croatia, Turkey, but most likely known for his success with Panathinaikos and now Ceska. Please welcome to the show, to the crossover, the longest tenured coach in Ceska Moscow's history, Mr. Dimitris Kitoudis. Coach, my man, how are you? What, what an introduction. All right. <laughs> I, I had so much more, but I had to cut it short because I know we're going to do a lot of talking. I, I can do a lot, a lot of introduction about you, man. The way <laughs> you were playing the ball. The way you were dominant uh, down there on the block or maybe facing the basket and using those pump fakes and, and, and score from the elbows. Yeah, wow, yeah, what yeah. a days, huh? You know, it's so funny. You know, you know, when I see the shot zone now, like when I do the games and I see the shot zone, Nobody makes shots where I used to make them. It's all yeah. it, that, that that area is all empty. It's either in the lane or outside the three point line. Yeah, you're right. You're right. All right. It's 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 crazy when you look at it. every time I see that thing and when I do the games. You know what's crazy is the, like the best part about these interviews is that I get to learn so much more about the people that some of them that I don't know, some of them that I've met, and other others that I know like like you, and. and I mean, I had no idea about the whole Croatia thing. I, I had, I had no idea. Oh, oh, wait. By the way, did you not? You just joined my, you just joined my club like a month ago, didn't you? I meant to ask you. Are you the, the big five O club? What is that five O? Fifty. Then you, then you just. Oh just, yeah, yeah, yeah. More than that. Like, we passed that. Like five O. <laughs> yes. I, I thought that is Hawaii five O. Like no, 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 no. no. Like that. Now the real 5-0 club, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, you know, I feel good. I feel good. I, I, I can tell you, it's it's, I, it's just a number. It's just a number. The, um, it's how much you feel inside, like. So, uh, I feel like I, can, I, I feel I have a lot of, uh, left in my tank. Oh yeah, you do. You do. Especially being one of the one, the youngest coaches in the Euroleague, you can't beat that. That's that's a great thing. To, I mean, with all the success you've had and being one of the youngest coaches, it's crazy. Well, yeah. So about Croatia, coming back to your question, uh, back then in um, uh, late '80s, uh, the internet was not that you know that uh, uh, that easy to find information out there. So I, I make my search and I, you know, telephone calls, friends, and this and that. Um, uh, I wanted to to be teached and I wanted to be uh, teached by best. And um, um, I think it was. You know, a friend that uh, kind of co convinced me to first to go to look uh, in Bulgaria. Uh, and then I said, no, uh, I'm going to go in uh, Yugoslavia back then. It was uh, Yugoslavia, uh, still united um, hey. one country. And, um, and uh, in 1987, it was the um, univer uh, university games, the international university games that uh, they took uh, place in Zagreb. They built uh, a new brand new facilities. Actually, the MVP was Tony Kukuc and coach was uh, uh, my friend uh, uh, um, Dusha Nikovic. So um, they, uh, why I'm saying that is that they create the, the best possible facilities out there. And the um, University of uh, Zagreb uh, used to be and still is one of the best. Actually, they, they are competing uh, with one more university in, uh, in Germany all these years about who is the first, who is the second. And um, I went there. It's it's kind of a karma. It, it's it, it's an interesting story because you didn't you, you weren't a typical player coach that grew up with a with a backboard or a rim in his backyard. From what I understand, you had your backyard was a farm. Uh, that's that's what your parents did, and and, and, yeah. and you didn't you didn't. It didn't seem like you came from the type of atmosphere as a kid to grow up in the basketball We're, yeah my background what? actually and the, the village i grew up uh, trikala uh, in imathia uh, up in north greece close to the saloniki or, or veria where i where i'm actually uh, i grew up 
uh, the background was not something like promising of uh, making such a such such a step to go to basketball. Actually, my father used to be a soccer player, but he was um, he he was playing bouzouki. You know, you know bouzouki probably. You, you, you enjoy bouzouki, all right? Un and, um, unfortunately, I do. Unfortunately, fortunately, I would say fortunately. Well, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Um, yeah. You, you, know, you gotta control your drinking. Like the, that's that's the only thing. The other the night, the other things. The night before the night before a game, it's not a good idea. Not not before the game. I'm, I'm saying about free day. The next day has to be a free day, obviously. Uh, not during the season. So, so he um, he was a singer. Uh, he was a, no not a singer. He he could have sing sing, but he was playing. He was just okay. playing. That's an instrument. Buzuki is an instrument. There's a, a traditional in instrument and very well known uh, in in Greece. Right. And um, but my grandfather did not let him go to Athens and ha follow his, his follow his guts and follow his career. A friend of his, of his uh, that he's a, a great and well known uh, bouzouki player now in Greece is very famous. Uh, went there and he succeeded. I'm not saying that he would have uh, do the same, but I'm just saying how the story goes. And uh, pretty much my father sees on me uh, a, a person that dares to follow his instinct, uh, dares to, to go out there and, uh, um, you know, go in a, in, a, in a foreign country without knowing any uh, any language because of my first year in Zagreb, um, I used to study the language. I, I didn't know anything about uh, uh, Serbo-Croatian language. So I had you to go over there. You and learned it your first year, right? You learned Croatian your first year there? Yes, yes. I went to um, uh, a special uh, uh, school about uh, languages and um, I, I learned the language there. And actually, the, the best way, though, uh, it was learning the language, the street language, when you, you, you start okay. making, uh, you know, friendships and, uh, and, and going out there. And actually, it helped me the fact that in uh, uh, cinemas, they're having subtitles. So since I was talking English back then, uh, it helped me uh, realizing what is that word, what is uh, uh, this word, and then slowly going to the newspaper and with a friendship, as I said, uh, I kind of, uh, you know, I can I can say that um, Serbo-Croatian now is my, you know, it's it's a native lang language, and the fact that I worked 13 years with Željko and we were experienced that we were talking obviously in in his language, uh, uh, it helped me too. Yeah, that, you know, it's 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 interesting because I was, when I was reading up on you and, and doing all this. I thought to myself, like I had cousins that were farmers when I when I was growing up. They had their country house and they had the, the big yard in the back and they 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 farmed corn and, and things like that. And it's it's not usually the type of family that you escape from. And I and I don't mean escape in a bad way. I mean it's it's born and bred into you from the day you're born. You work on the farm, everybody participates, everybody, everybody does what they have to do to make the business, the family business work. So even that makes your, you know, your dad's vision even more important because it's so much more difficult to get away from. And I'm not saying get away in a bad way. I don't want to make it sound bad because, because you'd rather be a basketball coach than a farmer, obviously, but farming is real important. And when it's in a family, it usually sticks. Well, obviously, and I, I, I I'm going to, try to say that your words are, I fully understand uh, farmers are very important uh, and, uh, and work at, uh, on, on the field is also very important, but let's, let's make it clear. My house was not having over there the corns and everything. Okay. We had a, 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 a small, let's say, um, part where my grand, grand uh, grandfather and my father, they, um, they had some corn, they have some mellows, they have some, some other things that we use for our, for our use, but the, the, the field, it was out uh, and uh, away from my house and we used to to use uh, you know those tractors or uh cars to go and work there so uh, i i haven't felt that you know it, it was not my call um yeah. this is when we when, when we say that if you believe your gods and if you believe what what you have inside like my call was to play ball and i'm actually i used to start playing soccer and uh, and a coach that used to coach my father and and also myself it was the the reason why i uh, turned myself to basketball uh in, at a young age in, in the age of uh, 13 back in 1983 and uh, 84 i was playing with the first team soccer i was i was in a in a in a, in a process with playing with seniors but i had back then a long hair it was it, it was you know it was the 
the way, let's say. So this coach didn't like the long hair. And uh, he was always ca calling me like, what is that? What is that? Like, and I said, do you have to say to me something about my, my playing, my style game, my playing way, or are you going to talk to me about hair? And he didn't like me as a 13 or 14 years uh, old a kid to answer to a, a, such a respectful coach. And uh, it came to a, an end w w one moment and I go to the captain and said, listen, I'm going to I'm going to go. Uh, and uh, until that day, unfortunately, he passed. Um, I do mention his uh, his name and he is actually he pushed me. He shows me the way, uh, you know, this is how when we say in life, when one door closed, the other uh, door is opening or the other window is opening. So uh, he kind of pushed me out of soccer and uh, I found my way to basketball. And uh uh, this is where you you could you could have find me uh, in this um, uh, you know uh, outdoor uh, um, court uh, in my school uh, at, at my village uh, Trikala playing and uh, shooting hoops and uh, everything you know uh, mosquitoes are, are are hitting us those are the signals when it's dark <laughs> out there we had no no light and uh, just the mosquitoes was the the signal like we gotta go home back so. And of course, my father was chasing me and my mother was saying, like, you got to help your father out to the fields. Uh, and she used to say that basketball will not give you, will not fit you. Basketball will not fit you. So, you know, obviously basketball um, fed us all. And um, I kind of appreciate that th those days. Uh, you know, I, this is a, a fondest memories that I have from my childhood, um, all these struggles. And as you said, the background, it was just giving me the opportunity to uh, fight uh, adversities or other things that I haven't felt that this is my call uh, with all the respect to those that they're uh, the, um, work on field and uh, it's it's a huge respect for those guys for sure. I, I think what you said about a door opening and a door closing is is one of the keys to life because most people most I shouldn't say most people I guess I should just say people in general see a door close and it's and when that door closes, you know it's so hard. It's so hard to tell yourself that there's going to be another door opening. You know what I mean at that moment. But it always seems to happen. I feel like when some of the doors have closed in my life, then three or four of them have opened. You know, and, and you have to recognize it. You have to see it. You have to be patient. But but I think that that's true. And hey, tell me about this book that 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 a coach gave you. That was, I I looked all over the internet for it. I guess it's called This Is Basketball. Well, that this is basketball. Yeah, back then I I can't. I got to find that book. I, uh, I hope my mom that she collects a lot of those uh, uh, items and books and everything. She, she still have it. Coach, I spent 40 minutes looking for it. I could not find it anywhere. You could not find uh, oh. uh, Yeah, Pavlos Parisopoulos, my first coach, he just gave me that book. And, you know, I, I, I literally dove in, in that book and I, I knew the commas and, and all the, the, the stuff from that book, what, what was suggested, how you're going to pivot the your leg, how you're gonna shoot the ball, the, the the release and everything, defense. So it was, it was more. It was more of a technical. It, I I thought it was more of a coaching book, or was it more? Yeah, of a, it was not. It was not. It was about uh, technical first, not about coaching in general. Technical. So you could have have pictures of how you know frame by frame how you go release the uh, 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 and uh, how you're gonna slide, how you're gonna help the the the, the all the these possessions, how you're gonna possess your pivoting. Uh, elbowing, where is your cylinder, and all this stuff. Yeah, it was my first book that I, I really uh, knew everything about that book. And I said, all right, listen, I kind of know that book. Why I'm not going to work with the kids? And back then, when I still was playing uh, in this cement league that Zeko used to say, uh, a local league in Hermes Trikalon. So I said, why I'm not teaching the young kids, you know? So... I started teaching the, as, a, as a player. I was an active player, and I, I was like, okay, let's teach those guys and put them that also fire and a love about basketball. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I, some of them, they still remember. Uh, recently, like three years ago, I well, thank God I had the opportunity of uh, rebuilding that uh, outdoor court, which I was uh, uh, throwing my first hoops in my village. And I, I've seen some of those kids that I was coaching back then. That of course, growing up, uh, uh, man with the families, kids, uh, they have now their own kids, and still they remember that dr drill we were doing in defense. Oh, 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 you know, like doing like, <laughs> are you gonna give the signal like going right, going left? And they, they still remember those drills that we were doing back in late eighties. Uh, how how old were you when you left for for Zagreb? 
18. 17 to 18, actually. 17, 17 to 18. 18. Yeah. Now, obviously, we talked about the fact that you just turned 50. And, and most people that most people that I've talked to in basketball, because that's the that's the world that I come from, obviously, that come from the former Yugoslavia that grew up there. And let's say they persevered because it, it wasn't it wasn't really the right time to be in that area. You met, you mentioned going there. You mentioned the old Yugoslavia. You mentioned and all and all I'm thinking like during this is here's a small town kid with two parents that are are small are small town. You, you explain that your dad was had more more possibilities in life, but didn't take advantage of them. How do they let their 18-year-old child, 17-year-old child, go to a country that is in some sort of disarray, a lot of disarray? All right, back then uh, in uh, 1988, September, when I left, um, it, it, it was not any, any problem in Yugoslavia. Right. Uh, Yugoslavia back then had uh, the best uh, championship in basketball. Uh, to, to, my, to my understanding back then, uh, all these uh, great players of, uh, from Kukoc to uh, Raja or uh, Paspal, those uh, Divac, uh, Danilovic, all these guys, they, they, they enter at the NBA. We, we, don't, we don't have enough time to mention all of them. Yeah, like Drazen, uh, Drazen Petric, of course, and, and all, this, uh, all these guys. And at the same time, I took those informations uh, about university and I, I kind of uh, went to my mom and, um, and, and dad and said, listen, you guys support my dream. That's my dream. And uh, it was not easy. It was not easy, exactly. But... Uh, they kind of, and I, I still admire their, uh, their, their positioning uh, of uh, uh, supporting that. The, the, the most difficult part in, in your question, which is related to your question, was in 91. In, uh, back in 1991, when the Civil War started. Right. Uh, when when the, the Greek TV, obviously, like all the TVs of, of the world, they were showing the Civil War and what happening in Zagreb or what happening in... Karlovac, which is 70 kilometers from, kilometers from Zagreb, or what happened in Knin, what happened here and there. This is when my mom uh, phoned me and, and says, is a war out there, you gotta come back. And I was like, no, nothing happens. And, and of course, a lot of things uh, going on, but I didn't wanna leave uh, Zagreb. And um, I was a part of um, uh, one bombing and I, I witnessed that. That was, that was really, uh, you know, my next, uh, let's say, five to six years i was scared uh, because i was on a, i was in a car and all of a sudden i heard a, 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 a you know a, a noise an a, 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 a enormous noise like boom and i thought my car because i i took a turn on my right and I, I'm, I'm trying to to give it like how it happened so right. when i turned on my right i thought that i fall in a in a in a, in a big hole and my car was cr like damaged I thought that, that something is going on with my car. And I went out of my car and I see all of a sudden around my, because it was in the center. And I see people like they're lying down, a police guy, because there were a lot of embassies over there. A police guy says to me, go down, go to the floor, go to the floor. So what is going on? And all of a sudden, 50 meters away of me, a car is on fire. And I said, what is going on? You know, like people say like, go down, go down, you know, cover yourself. And then I realized, and this happened, of course, obviously within a 30 or 40 or 50 seconds, something like that. But all of a sudden from the side that I, I, I realized that my car is OK, but something is going on uh, even, uh, bigger. And, uh, uh, and my next uh, five, six years, uh, it was my one hand, it was on the door to open the door and escape immediately from the car, whatever car I was driving. So, you know, yeah, my mom was, you know, she was aware because obviously the news that were going all, all over the, the world and uh the, the but you know the university never stops and um that was that was the good the, the good story we we kind of and zagreb was not that that much touched let's say besides those kind of uh, um small um uh small or big you know people are, are losing their lives and, and it's big okay. for many families and uh, better not to go to this area because i have i have had uh, uh colleagues that there were Serbians, uh, Croatians, Bosnians, that when when the Slovenians and when when uh, when when the war start, they have to leave, and yeah. we, we suddenly we 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 find out that this guy lost his life, this guy we playing basketball lost his legs, this guy you know lost his hands, and then 
one friend, he, he was giving an interview to the Croatian uh, TV and says, what, what are we doing over here? Who, who are we fighting against? Our brothers? And thank God the things are, are now better. I mean, people are they're still coming back to normality. But I, I witnessed that fact because I, I drove a friend of mine to his uh, um, village to vote. And we were passing through literally um, dead villages or, or towns. Like they were the UN over there. Like they were completely empty because it was a zone of a war, a war zone. So it was it's not crazy, you know. crazy time. And, and, and the fact that you're there studying, you're studying physical education. And, yeah. and I, that's where you get your first job. Also, you get your first job as, as a coach, right? While you're there. Yeah. In Mladost, uh, I was, I was in a university actually on my second year, we had the, um, the specialization. So basketball and on my second year, uh, a friend of mine uh, till now, Igor Jukic, that uh, were great friends until that day uh we were playing basketball and uh you know there were those uh we were playing pickup games but to play on that certain basket uh you need to be a you know a good player let's say so it was yeah. also the second division or the third division basket that there were uh, other uh, other people playing so he invited me to play there and that was already a good stuff and then when, when Phil is a pickup game he was saying hey listen I'm, I'm looking for a coach for the for the mini basketball like, is anybody available? And I immediately, I raised my hand. I was on my second uh, year of uh, studying, and uh, this is how it started. So was, there was no, that was just like instinctive. There was, there was no, but you, I mean, you had to have some sort of, from that book that you read, and you said yeah. that you wanted to teach people, you had to have some sort of like. Yeah, it was the instinct. It was the instinct, and it was the experience I, I gained from the university the first two years, and talking with those guys. This literally uh a lot of knowledge you taking from university let's let's the um, uh, university people don't get me wrong uh, university is great but the university of life is even better oh, and yeah. university of life um uh, educates you in many uh, ways when you have a good base from university uh, of of uh, whatever you're going either that's medicine or it's uh physical education or it's mathematics or whatever it is so the, the university of life for me was this group of five people that we were talking like literally 24 hours a day how are we going to pivot how are we going to put our elbow how are we going to teach the kid the, the release the reception the dribble and um, all this stuff it was the my university and uh, and I'm, I'm i'm still to that day thankful to those uh, to this group of people which i contact and i i proudly uh, saying my friends but you know, my question is, when, again, when I, I do the research, I start, I, I come up with these, these thoughts and these questions. Sometimes they're out there, sometimes they're, 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 they're good, and, and Euroleague really accepts them, you know? But, but my question is, as an American, even though now European players are, are obviously accepted into the NBA, they're, they're not 100% they're, they're, they're not accepted. They're not always accepted by the players themselves. And, but they're, they're, they're playing so well now in the States that they are more accepted than, they, than they've ever been. But as far as coaching jobs, coaching is a small fraternity in America. And, and it's hard to go to America. Coach Kokoczyk coach that I, I, I talked to, he, he always talked about the fact that it was so hard for him to get in. Yeah. But once he was in, he was in. How do you get into, how do you get into Croatia where you all of a sudden you become a Greek coach in Croatia and, and there had to be issues. Well, there were issues. And uh, I can tell you a story about that. Exactly how you said it. It was Yugoslavia back then or either Croatia or Serbia afterwards or Bosnia that they were uh, giving out of their countries a lot of players or coaches to work. And all of a sudden a Greek guy is working in the first league of Croatia. Exactly. With, uh, uh, Bosco Bozic, Pepsi, well known. Yeah, well, was why, why, why they call him Pepsi? I want to ask that. Oh, it, it was it, it was his nickname. It was his nickname. I, I know it was his nickname. Was it because he drank Pepsi all the time? I, to be honest, I never asked him about that, and that's my okay. that, that's sad. <laughs> uh, we we all call him Pepsi. Uh, it was Bosco Bozic, his name, and we we never uh, uh, we, I never asked him. I don't know, but probably is that maybe Jelko knows because it was the the, the years that Jelko actually accept. 
accept it. But now this is a, a, a new story. This is also an interesting yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. Jericho accepted to be a player of KK as I, where, where I was an assistant coach already. So he's supposed to be our player. But th that was back in 91 then, then, uh, when he supposed to play in a, uh, with a national team and then uh, he became a coach through yeah. a night. But coming back to the coaching job, uh, when I became an assistant coach in KK Zagreb uh, to Bosko Božić, it was one of the um, meetings they had in, um, in, uh, in Federation. And Mirko Novosel, like he, he used to say like, okay, I mean, uh, obviously we want to have the, the best of the best, but you have over there the Greek guy, what, what is going on? You cannot find a Croatian guy or something. And, and uh, Pepsi, uh, Bosko Božić, uh, my head coach, he really protects me and he says, what is going on? You have also those Bosnian guys, like they treat like a, you know the, the, right, the, right, the right, passport right. now. So they're foreigners too. You know, of course that that was a joke, but he kind of protect me on that, and he gave me a lot of freedom to to work with such great players. Probably you recall Sobin or Jelko Poljak. Those are already uh, affirmated and being European champions with uh, Split or Yugo Plastica, and uh, all of a sudden me with uh, at the age of 21. Uh, still playing here and there some games for my team, uh, flying on 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 Friday uh, late, playing uh, practicing Saturday, playing early in the morning on Sunday, and coming back to my university to to, to be on time on uh, on uh, uh, you know uh, on, on the lesson in, in the morning, and um, you know all of a sudden at the age of 21 I'm coaching uh, players that they they were very affirmated and they were very professional, and I, I'll tell you that. My biggest problem, it was not with those guys, Jelko Poljak or, or, or Goran Sobin, that they had already a background and a career. It was with the young kids, like uh, at my age, like uh, 21, that right. they had, all right, like, what is going on now? A, a, a student from university comes and <laughs> to, to teach us. But uh, this, is the, this is a funny story. One of them that they had the biggest problem of, you know, like, um, confront me or uh, trying to be the, um, the macho guy, you know, right. or whatever. So he says, you're not going to succeed in basketball. You know, you will never succeed in basketball. I said, okay, no problem. Like maybe I'm not going to succeed, but let, let's make a bet. And still that bet is on and he's not paying that dinner. He <laughs> became now a coach. Yeah. Uh, Krunic is his name. Uh, a point guard we had uh, the other day, actually back in 2016, when we won in a, uh, in Berlin, he gave me a call, among other ex-players that I had and everything, and he says, all right, I own you that dinner. I said, okay, it's a time. It's a time to pay that dinner, you know? You were wrong. But the, the, the thing is that he was the, as I said, the macho guy. The other guys, I was coaching uh, Paschanovic and Delic uh, individually after, afterwards in the practice because they, they, they were not taking that much of a, a time on a, on a practice. They were the young kids back then. And I said, okay, you guys, you're staying for an extra one hour work with me individually. And then Zeljko Poljak and Goran Sobin, they go, listen, if you're going to work with those young kids, we're going to work too. We're the centers too. We belong over here. And I was like, no, 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 you, you, you know, you're, you guys are you're on your job. Please, you're, vet, you're vets. I mean, go, go and uh, do your treatment. No, 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 no. If those guys that work, we work. So that was like a, a real lesson for me, you know. Those guys, they're already affirmated. Those are the main guys, the main players. They're gonna tomorrow. They're gonna play 30 minutes. They want to work another extra hour of individual. So you know, everything can happen. Speaking about speaking about owing dinners, you know, I still owe I still owe your assistant coach Daryl Middleton a dinner from okay from when they beat when they beat us in Game Five here in Madrid. All so right. ne the next time you guys come to Madrid, you have to let him go out because he keeps telling me he's like you owe me a dinner. Oh, I let him. I let him go out. Who's anybody tell you that that don't let him go out? Last time he's a man. I had, he's like I had. To, of course, there you know Daryl. I mean, he's a little quiet, so he's a, he's, he's a little he, bit more quiet, but uh, <laughs> he, he becomes more vocal w w when it comes to time. So, all right. Well, next Just time, time a good a good wine, and that will be all right. There you go. Next time you come to Madrid, I got to take him out to dinner. Right. Now, you 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 mentioned that Zelko Obradovic was was going to play for the team that you were coaching? Yeah, but, KK Zagreb. But had you, a, had you met him at that time or? No, I haven't met, met uh, at that time. Uh, uh, Jelko finished with Partizan as a player. Right. He was looking for his next team. He, he was still an active player and actually he- that, He was a captain, he was a captain of the- National the, team. The national team, yeah. Yeah, the, this is the Eurobasket in, uh, in Italy, in, in, in Rome. 
and uh, he's supposed to lead. That was the last uh, United Yugoslavia. That was the the year that Yugoslavia won the gold medal, and Zdovs did not play the final. If you right. if was called from his uh, government, not because the war already started. Those days, that was a you know. So, uh, but uh, Zhejko uh, at that summer was talking with a, with a several teams of where he continues his career, and he he took a call from my coach uh, uh, Bosko Bozic. And he accepted that call. So he, oh. he accepted that call to be a player in KK Zagreb after the Eurobasket in, uh, in, in Rome. Obviously, and as the story goes, he never played that Eurobasket, but he became a coach of Partizan. So okay. he never also, he could not fulfill the, the promise he gave to, to my coach playing for KK Zagreb. So for, for that close, he could have be my player, but how we joke each other, he says, but uh, he said, no, 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 I would, I would have come over there and I would be the coach for you too. He said, <laughs> but the, the karma was like that. Yeah, yeah, I haven't met him that that uh, those days, but eventually I met him back in uh, '92 to '93. It was a Christmas days, and uh, the connection was Duda again uh, because uh, Duda wanted to give him something, and uh, my team KK Zagreb and his team Juventud Badalona back then. Uh, we were playing in a Christmas tournament in Nackerslot, in uh, a suburb of uh, Amsterdam. Right. Great tournament over there. And uh, this is where we met, actually, first time. Wait, wait, and you guys, what, what was the conversation about? I mean, because Zelko had, I, I believe at that point when you met him, he had just come off of winning the, the with Partizan, no? Yeah, yeah, he was already a winner with Partizan, and uh, he and took over Juventud. Now he's now he's in the he's in the preseason with Badalona. With Badalona. It was not a preseason. It was a, um, a Christmas tournament. A Christmas and then we, we 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 could have the Christmas tournament. You remember also Madrid was doing. Uh, yeah, yeah, we did a, yeah. Unfortunately, I remember it way too well. Yeah, so they used to ruin my Christmases. <laughs> I mean, for us was also another another uh, part of the story. Actually, together with Jacob, we coached uh, um, against Real Madrid in in, in one. Uh, uh, this um, all-star team, European, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. was, co uh, was coached. Zelko was called, and he called me to assist him. Uh, so Zelko uh, wasn't when you're in this tournament in the Netherlands. Zelko wasn't. I mean, he, he wasn't Zelko. Yeah, he he. I mean, he, 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 was, he was a young coach. They already won uh, the the league once. Uh, I mean, but I mean, come on, coach. I mean, even even if you say you, he had a he had a young team, he did a good job. But it's just one win. I mean, you you, you got to be thinking, okay, well, you got lucky. No, 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 no. No, I, I, I you know, lucky, luck, luck is all right. It's a part of our life. But if Quite you're right. not capable, if you're not resisting, if you're not this part, you mentioned something about uh, what I mentioned before about one door closing, the other door is uh, opening. And you're you uh, you're talking today with a with a guy that I'm pretty much of this, uh, you know, saying fall forward, yeah, never back. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have fa fails in your life. You're gonna have faults in your life. So my faults and your faults maybe are not the same, or my faults and the, the faults of our audience are not the same. But eventually we're gonna have our faults. The fact is, how you're falling? You're falling forward or you're falling back? Uh, are you are being dis depressed because of a door closed, or are you gonna say, all right, that's an opportunity for any um, uh, uh, death? Life is starting uh, for everything. What is uh, you know. Um, uh, ruined apart, uh, and another uh, beginning is out there. So you got to find your opportunity uh, and take it as a lesson. So I mean, at that point, all right, you saying about luck, uh, he, he was very capable. And um, I well, met him. Uh, it was a briefly a meeting. We were with two teams. Uh, I gave him an envelope that Duda was wanted to, to give him to, to him, obviously. And then um, we talked, we exchanged uh, telephone numbers. And from that uh, point and after, we were in some kind of a contact, but not a uh, daily basis, uh, obviously. Right. But when he was coming, after that, I moved to the Saloniki and uh, Pauk. Uh, he was coming with Madrid, uh, playing games. We, we've, we've seen each other. Then I, I coach as a head coach, Filipos, A2 division, second division of Greece. We, we, we met a couple of times. And then uh, back in 99, uh, when I was coaching men, and I was in conversation with, uh, uh, with them to continue from the next season, this is when Jaco called me uh, to join him in Panathinaikos in uh, June of uh, '99. I, I thought that was well. First of all, let me talk about the fact that I, I was glad a lot of doors. 
I, I thought Selko might have been lucky the first year. The second year when he coached Badalona and he beat and he beat me and Sabonis in the semifinals and, and the rest of the team in Madrid, who we were the favorites to win. Then I'm like, okay, well, maybe this guy really knows what he's doing. You know, so I had to give him. And then and then he came to me and I was like, okay, it's my turn now to take advantage of this. Yeah. But but the interesting thing that I learned in that meeting that you had with him in Thessaloniki was that was 1999. That was when I, I essentially retired that year. I, I left the game, I played in, in Ike, and I'm like, I'm done. I, I, I'm done traveling with family, you know, it gets difficult after a while. And, and Iris kept calling me back. And I eventually, in year 2000, I went to Iris to, to, to play my last four months. I came out of retirement and played. And I was thinking, man, if Zelko, was up there looking for the artist job and you would have been the assistant. Would you guys have, would you guys would have called me out of retirement? Yeah, that, that's an interesting story because he had a call from Maris. Actually, the, the, the yeah, first call, it was from Maris. Yeah, I and, uh, that, that was what I couldn't believe in the whole, that whole, because he went for an interview to, with, with artists from what I understand. Actually, he had, how he uh, describes me, he had some, some calls and he uh, talks, but um, they, they never show up. And then uh, in the, in the mid, in the mid time, uh, Panathinaikos showed up and Mr. Uh, Pavlos Yanakopoulos. So, you know, uh, and he took that call and it, it was good. Uh, yeah. Apparently it was, it was great for, it was for both of us. <laughs> you, you were not there, actually. You, you, you retired, but we coached great players from, from, hey, from that day and, and so. You, you, uh, you probably don't remember this, but I came back and played for an artist in the first, the second, the first game that I played, I hadn't, I literally hadn't touched the ball in like eight months. Oh. I, 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 I retired, I retired, I was done. But Aries kept calling me. And the first game we came back, I came back and I played was like around Christmas time and we played against you guys. You guys were undefeated in the league. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember, how, how, how can I forget that? Yeah, of course, I, yes, of course I remember. And I we told you many times that this guy, he can shoot the ball still. So, <laughs> wait, you know. wait, look. I scored like 18 in that game. I remember 16 or 18 or something. And, and like the press was like, oh my God, our Laukas is here. Our Laukas, the God is, he's back. The team's going to be good. Two days later, we played against Pauk. They were at last place. We were second last place. I couldn't even run up and down the court. I was so, I was so, and my body hurt so bad from playing against you guys yeah. that I scored like two points and then they wanted to fire me. Did he play you on the, on, on, the pyramid was Johnny Rogers that guarding you or who nah, it was that? Johnny yeah it was Johnny was Johnny was with you guys at that time yeah. that was that was a hilarious story because the next day two days later we go to Pauk which is right across town I couldn't even get out I couldn't even get my couldn't lift myself off the bench my butt hurt so bad my legs hurt well I give you some heads out that now it comes to me we we we, we kept saying on the scouting like keep that old man tired like keep him always involved like you know have him always aware of guarding somebody. He can't stand that. He can't come back all of a sudden and play that game, you know, like a youth player. Keep him always involved. That was the, the that was the thing. And we can we can we can ask that Johnny. Yeah. I've, heard that, I've heard that for years, man. Make him play defense. I'm like, no one can make me play defense. And if you could score more than 35 a game, then I don't have to play defense. Uh, you know? uh, tell that to Saras now because Saras used to say that uh, too. Now he's always yelling. Yeah, I know. At defense right? he changed all of a sudden he changed he comes to that part yeah, of it. I and i told him when he was still a player like when you're gonna cross that river and go to the other side now you're gonna think a little bit different so. i even even i coach these kids over here the the high school that i'm at I, I i i'm always on defense 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 but let, let me ask you something now you coach 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 Obradovich gives you this call and you as you mentioned you spent three years now in thessaloniki and Pauk. You know, I mean, this is where you grew up. I mean, you grew up with, other than the, the 1987 championship, but you grew up in, in what I think back then was the actual heart of basketball. It was Thessaloniki, when you had Pau Canardis and you had Nico Gallis and, and all these, these just incredible players. Now you go back and you, and you head coach for three years there. During the season, actually, I had... Um... I, I came. That's also another story. Like uh, when I when I when I had a deal with Pau, uh, uh, the head coach was Vagelis Alexandris, and uh, we were playing a game in Slovenia, and uh, I still had my stuff in uh, in uh, my apartment in Zagreb, and I said the team will go back, 
and I go pick up my stuff. So I'm not going to come back with a team. So I'm going to pick up the, uh, the uh, another flight on uh, the next day. And I come back. And back then, it was uh, the, 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 I didn't have a mobile yet. So I, I go on, a, on, a, on the airport and I see the newspaper that uh, the head coach was sucked. And I, I said, I came over here to work with this guy and now he's, uh, he get fired. And a new coach was, uh, was coming, Eftimis Kimurzoglu. So what is going on? I just pick up my stuff. Maybe they're going to kick me out too. So it was this door open, door closed, you know, like, but it, it was literally like that. So I go to the practice and, and the new head coach, Eftimis Kimurzoglu, says, listen, I know you're over here. We're going to work together. I said, okay, that's my first relief. Okay, we continue. And then during the season, again, Ephthemis in one practice says to me, listen, uh, that's my last practice. I said, what do you mean like, like, practice, like practice? And we were preparing the team to play against Dynamo Moscow. Uh, and he says, from tomorrow, you taking over the team. I said, what? Like he had some problem and he gave uh, like, you know, he, that was his last practice literally in, uh, in the evening. And then he went to the locker room and announced the players that he's leaving the team. And then I had to coach the, the team in this first game so my first uh, 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 game that I coach as a head coach, it was uh, here in Moscow on the same gym that we played the last game last year on Gomelsky Arena. Uh, Dynamo Moscow was playing Dainenko, Bazarevic. Those are the players. Bazarevic used to be a point guard, uh, Dynamo Moscow. And I, the players that I was coaching was like, you know, uh, Prelevic or Stojakovic or Redzias, Yanulis. Uh, Lawrence Vandenberg, uh, Dean Garrett, those guys, uh, the, the team hired Jelko Lukaic as a head coach. So we worked a, a great period with Jelko, and the team was playing amazing. But then the coach was sucked too before the playoffs. So I had to took the team uh, uh, to run in the playoffs from the fifth uh, spot and, and to kick out Aris. And you know, you mentioned that. Like, you know what what means the game, Pau Aris, you know, or, oh, yeah, or, or Panathinaikos Olympiakos, or Real Madrid Barcelona, or Red Star Partizan. So this is the uh, the relations we're, we're talking about. So, uh, no, it was not a, a step back. Uh, um, I, I knew uh, and I, you know, uh, I wanted to to work with the best and uh, learn from the best. And uh, obviously, Jelko was one of the best. And um, uh, the, the introduction over here, again, uh, it, it, it came from uh, Duda. When Duda was talking, Jelko called Duda, and Duda says to him, like, you, you, you're going to hire Dimitris. And uh, this is when the call uh, came from Jelko, and I went up to Panorama, the hotel that he was uh, at, and we talked. And uh, at that moment, though, in my life, it was going another story. My, my dad, it was in the intensive care. Right, that's that's what I heard when you and uh, and uh, you know the call is coming. Uh, we don't know if my my dad is gonna escape the 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 heart attack he had. So it was uh, the first day in an intensive care, and uh, the, the the second day I remember closing the uh, coming to the actually a real uh, an actual actual deal with the Panathinaikos. I I went to the doctor and I said, "Can I announce that to my dad? He's gonna be good." He said, "Of course, that's a good news." And this is what gave him. Uh, the boast, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was not a step back. It was a, it was um, another opportunity for uh, for growth, uh, for being uh, for for involvement within a great organization with I, great. I think it's kind of like the base of what we talked about here most of this time. The first first forty minutes here is is a door opening. You know, more more yeah. than a door closing on one side, it's a door open on the other. But you know, I, when I did Xavi Pasquale, who's another great young coach like yourself he, he he explained to me something that I never thought of before and and, and it was because he was an assistant for a long period of time before he became a head coach and I was just like you know you in Europe sometimes you get stuck into that that you're an assistant and that's it you're an assistant coach and, and you never get out of that and and he said to me he said and maybe he opened up my eyes he, he said he said Joey like some people just want to be assistants and they're okay with that they don't want. They don't want to move on. That's what they do. They they become assistants. And I was like, you, because my mind was always like, if if I'm in third place, I want to be in second place. If I'm in second place, I want to be in first place. You know what I mean? But that's true. There there are coaches that just they're happy with the job that they have and and their assistants. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying it in a bad way. But were you concerned that you could get in get stuck into that that? that group of, of people that are like, well, he'll always be an assistant coach. He tried to be a head coach, and now he went back to being an assistant. 
Well, no, that was that was a, that was a great. I, I've seen it as an opportunity. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, with all the respect to all the uh, coaches that they want to stay as an assistant coach, and nothing wrong, as you said, with that. They don't want their responsibility because um, it comes with a job, the responsibility. You, 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 you're being ahead of something. You're leading some group. Then you need to face the consequences. Actually, this is what I said in many of my um, talks to other uh, other people. Like when you you're, when you're being hired, you gotta be ready to be fired. Yeah, you yeah. gotta be ready on the next day to be fired. Now it's it's up to the owners that they hire you. Are they gonna fire you immediately? So they they say that that was a wrong decision what they just made. But that's another topic. Uh, now, for me, it's those are all opportunities. That right. was I consider myself um, a sucker of knowledge, if I may say it like that. Either that knowledge comes from the conversation I'm going to have just now with you, or a book that I'm going to read, or a, 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 a great relation I'm going to have and a collaboration that I'm going to have with my associates, that they're now my assistant coaches or the head coaches that I had. I, I I kind of take. Uh, something from each and every day that um, uh, I'm living. I'm not going to waste the days just like that. So believe me, I'm going to get something out of this conversation uh, for my own growth. So for me, that's a great opportunity. And in this 13 years we've been together, I proudly announced to your now show and to you that I'm, I'm proud that I actually helped with many others to say out there, that also in European basketball, assistant coaches are very important. Yeah. Uh, that, that this is a group work. Yes, the head coach is leading. Yes, the head coach is taking some crucial decisions. Yes, the head coach is the one that the spotlight, he's on the spotlight. But he has some guys behind the scenes that they're working. And this is very important. The synergy is very important. How we are going out there and ask for the players to have a synergy to share the ball, have a good spacing, respect the spacing of Arlaukas, respect the spacing of this guy. So if he wants to create down there, so we need to respect the, the space among us. And I'm telling you again, I proudly announced this 13 years, I was always saying that we are associates. It's not just assisting, we are associates. We have roles to fulfill. And I was very, very good with the role I have because and my head coach back then, Jelko, had the, let's say, the ability to recognize the talent among his associates and give him the field to evolve and to go with their ideas. Of course, it was not easy. You see us many times, you go with one video, pick one video, pick one game, many times Jelko is going back to the bench and just cursing them <laughs> or something. But that was exactly how the team had a benefit out. You know, like uh, we, I was probably the loud second thoughts he had in his uh, mind, but being all justified. It was like hear it out loud of my mouth being justified. These ideas that we all have, these second thoughts, should I do that? Maybe, maybe I should do that. And then all of a sudden he, he hears that, but with a justification, why? Right. So I, I saw it as an opportunity and uh, you know very well, that in this 13 years, I had three very good offers to become a head coach. But uh, I, I took decisions in my life. And maybe some of friends, and maybe including you, maybe some journalists, they said, this guy is a chicken. This guy is a, you know, he is afraid. He's always assistant coach. He uh, go, goes behind the back of or whatever. I was listening. Like, they wanted more, better than, than myself, you know? The, the all, all of a sudden, all, all the people, they know better than yourself. But I was just waiting. I was just waiting. I was just waiting. I was just waiting. So it's not about me proving something. I was just waiting. I wasn't one of those guys. I wasn't here. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> maybe you never know since we're talking to each other now. No, no, no. It, it wasn't me. The only, the only time I ever got on you, you came back at me was when I was doing an interview at the Basconia game one time. And, oh, I, said, right. and I said something about, um, I think it was like a, Bastonio, you guys were averaging like 87 points a game, and Bas, and, you, and or no, Bastoni was averaging like 87 points a game, and you went into like a two-three matchup zone, and you got mad at me because I called it a matchup zone. I don't even remember that out there. You're like, call it whatever the hell you want to call it. It's like it worked. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 20, 23 titles, 
total titles, 11 Greek championships, seven Greek cups, uh, obviously the five Euro league titles. I mean, where, tell me how, I mean, I don't want to get into all of them because we obviously don't have enough time, but, but talk to me about some of the players that you got had on this team, Batiste, uh, Diamantidis. I mean, it's just, it, the list goes on and on. Yasakevich, it just goes on and on. Lebrecha, Bodiroga, Katas, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Albertis. It, so. It's Panulis. It's just, it, it just goes on and on. It, it's, it's crazy. You know, and, and I, I've, I've asked this to most of the coaches that I've talked to, and, I, and Sardis, I, I asked this especially, because he's more known right now until Barcelona for being a coach that, you know, is, is a smaller budget team, but he does a good job with them. But I asked him, like, what would you rather have, a smaller budget team, the guys you can work hard with, or, or, or like a bigger – he's like, of course I'd rather have a bigger budget. You know, there's no doubt any coach wants to have a bigger budget, and obviously he has that now. But for you guys, it, was, it wasn't so much the budget, it wasn't so much the, the players, it was the way – you guys got them to play together, which which amazed me. And, and watching these, because it's hard to bring personalities together and then make them men, especially when they're big personalities. Well, uh, it's thank you for that question because um, it's worth to mention over here the family Yanakopoulos. You know, all this will uh, will never happen if the brother Yanakopoulos will not be there and if they will not be driven. Uh, to give a joy to the fans of Panathinaikos, to give a joy to the Greek basketball in general after that uh, as, an, uh, as, as a team that really was dominant uh, in, uh, uh, or at least being consistent on what represents out there in European uh, uh, scene and also in Greek, uh, obviously, uh, domestic uh, leagues. Uh, so all these great players is because, uh, as I said, uh, Mr. Pavlos and Mr. Thanasis and Mr. Kostas and the family Yanakopoulos in general um, invested, uh, uh, if I may say, actually put, not invested, like putting their money uh, right. on it. Like, I, I don't think so, it was an investment. Um, so it was a gift, more of a gift than, than an investment to, 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 to the fans and to the society. Uh, so those gr great players, yes, obviously we wanna have a great budget, but back then we did not had the, the best budget in Panathinaikos. But the legacy was created starting from the system and the head coach that he's representing that. He make a lot of players and uh, allow me to say that because I was involved in many of those uh, uh, signings and uh, uh, you, you mentioned Batiste and Jelko was gave, giving me this opportunity to talk with many of those players when we have to recruit them because we usually talk to them and I talk to them now uh, before we recruit. Those guys that were motivated to come in with, even with less money to Panathinaikos. So they, they've they seen it together, of course, with their agents. They, they've seen it that that's the right destination for them. And this is how it was created. You know, it was, you know, some many times the, the, the legacy is running ahead of you, before you, actually. So, and uh, this is how it was created back then. It was a, it was a great uh, deal to, you know, uh, facing all this, adversities we, we're facing uh, because the first final we played with Panathinaikos, it was the cup final back in uh, 99 and at the same gym that few months after we're going to become a, a European champion in Thessaloniki and we lost that final uh, against Ike that he was coached by Duda by two points if I'm not mistaken uh, so that was what actually united us so we're coming back again to falls this let's say disappointment for us, uh, it became the foot and the energy that that group of, uh, of, of players had to, all right, we're going to come back here at the same gym and we're going to win even a bigger trophy. And yeah. this is what happened. Like, you know, we, we kind of, we, we, we better than that. So, uh, so we, we never fall back. We fall forward and said, we have this quality and let's meet our potential and we're going to become even better. So this first season that we became a European champion, it helped a lot to build that legacy and for what comes up. You know, I've always said you learn, you learn so much more from losing than you do from winning. You know, other than, other than the fact that it's, it's a, a, a moment to, to learn and understand, and, and, but it's also a motivator. You know, it, it motivates yeah, yeah. better. Definitely as a person. 
uh, and definitely as an occupation, if there is a call, if you're a coach or you're a CEO, you're a president, that you have to realize that in life, you know, losses are just another opportunity for growth. Right. Uh, if you believe on what you, you 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 have out there, and if you believe on the on the fundamentals you have and the ethics you have, and the respect you have towards the game, you have to accept this as a as a gift. Sometimes, even though it's an absurd, you, no, nobody wants to go out there and lose games. Yeah. You know, I've I've always said that I've, I'm I'm lucky enough to have the ability to remember winning championships. But I've, but I've been cursed with the fact that I cannot forget losing. <laughs> you know, I, I, if anybody wants to talk to me about winning a European championship, about scoring 63 points, I'll say, hey, yeah, I'll talk about it. But like, I still have nights, even at 56 years old, where I remember losing to your assistant coach, Daryl Middleton, in that game five, you know, on my, on my home court, you know. And, and I, feel, I feel like it's a curse, but I feel like, it's what, as I was younger, I was being brought up in the game and in sports. It's what made me better. It, it made me want to be better. And, and even though it's a curse, you know, sometimes curses are, are a good thing as long as you use them positively. Well, definitely, because I hate this, th this phrase that, you know, I did it all. I tried it all. No, you did not. Something is out there you haven't tried. Something is out there you, you don't know. Something is out there you haven't work on so go get it go get it go practice it, it you know like face it so you know people say oh I, I tried it that's that's a kind of a losing mentality i tried it all no you did not you, you did not you know the problem is you realize it later because i realize that you know now looking back on things if if i would have eaten a little bit better when i played if i would have had a better diet if i would have maybe done like more like yoga or like pilates or stretching you know, I'd have been more concerned about my body uh, than just going and playing. Um, you know, I might have been able to extend my career a little bit longer, and I might have been better than, than what I was. So there's no, you, you never it, – it's hard for a player to stop and walk away and say, I think I did everything perfect. You, it's just, it just doesn't – you can't You need do to it. listen to those, those experts. That's why now the, the, the job of uh, strength conditioning coaches and so, all the personnel you're hiring is actually an investment for each and every club. This is what we need to now, if we want to grow here in Europe, we need to invest, allow me to say, to a personnel. We need to hire psychologists, uh, yeah. Pilates coaches, you said, uh, well-educated uh, uh, strength conditioning coaches because they became very important and they are very important. Physiotherapists that they're gonna, you know, I can't touch a player if it doesn't go through that process. I gotta get the green line of war, these guys, that he is capable to come to my hands and then I'm going to be on his back because uh, all these guys are very important. This is an investment to each and every club to have this personnel that actually what they're doing, they're just making your investment, which is the main players that you're paying a lot of money. Right. They make them better. They make them believe, like you said, and you witness it, to understand how important it is to, be, to, to, to care about his body, about his nutrition, about his rest, uh, about everything, about his fitness, and about his psychological part. We are coaching 15 different or 16 different person, people, that they coming from a different religion, different beliefs, and they have their families, they have their surrounding. So ima imagine how important it is to go over there and to talk to some person, to open yeah. his heart. Yeah, I, I mean, I have a little say next. I try to do that with younger players. You know, I try to explain to younger players that, I'll never forget Ricky Brown when I played with him. And he, he, he saw me out there. He was 30-something years old. I was 24. And he saw me dunking after practice. He's like, hey, he's like, hey Rook. He's like, slow down with that. <laughs> he's like. Save your legs, huh? Yeah, he's like, save your legs. He's like, he's like, if you keep doing this, you're going to have a long time to go. He's like, he's like you, don't need to do, you don't need to be dunking after practice. He's like, work on your turnaround jump shot. Work on other things. But don't. he's like, don't worry about dunking all the time. But hey, real quick. How did y'all lose Spanulas? Well, <laughs> what a story. <laughs> well, we haven't actually, it's not losing Spanulas. That's what, what was his call. And uh, his call from, from that starts from inside of him. Like, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Vasilis had the opportunity and the offer, obviously, from Panagos was great. Uh, yeah. But he felt that he needs to move on. And uh, to be honest, uh, and, uh, you know, you need to follow your guts at that moment. It was not easy a decision to make. Like right. going from Panagos to Olympiacos was not easy. You know, it, it, no. you, you need to have guts and uh, you need to have a plan on, on how you're going to support that for your family, for your friends, for your, for your own, uh, you know, um, health and everything. So we, we have not l- lost Panulis. And that season was another fall, but it was a fall forward because we, uh, uh, Spanulis, it was the season before when he went to uh, NBA. And right. we lost also Lakovic. We, we all of a sudden we were without point guard like 2007. I'm talking, and then he came back in 2009. He won the the, the trophy in Berlin against uh, CSKA. Great team, both teams, great teams. Uh, and then he made the decision to to leave, and uh, he wanted to to lead a new team, and he succeeded in all this. Uh, what he let's say uh, described for himself how to you know, uh, open a new chapter in his life. Mm-hmm. The, the, you, you finish the, those years, Zelko leaves, you leave. Zelko takes a sabbatical, you take a sabbatical. You come back, you get a three-year three year deal to Turkey. I, I'm, I'm sure during the sabbatical, I'm not going to get into what you did. I'm sure you didn't walk away from the game. I'm sure you, you, you spent that learning. No, I, I actually I had a deal with EuroLeague and I was the I was analyzing every week. Uh, I had my corner in EuroLeague side, and I was uh, the coach corner, how we call it. Yeah, so I was analyzing games and I, I tried to introduce to people the, the 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 coaching view from the from the from the side as a coach that was not uh, working. That's one thing. Uh, then uh, we went with Jelko to maybe more than ten or. 12 clinics around the world, like from Dubai to Stockholm, from uh, Belgrade to Greece, from Greece to uh, Croatia, from, you know, we, 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 we went uh, to many clinics, like talking to, uh, to other coaches and try to share knowledge, uh, travel a lot. I had a couple of offers during that period, uh, actually four offers, uh, but I decided to stay all the way. We had a plan and then the plan has been changed. Uh, all of a sudden, with a call of Bandwit. You know, I was uh, I was in a summer vacation in uh, Great Island, Rodos, which I spent many of my summers. And Rodos is a, one of my favorite places. Yeah, beautiful island, and yeah. a lot of friends over there. Uh, and uh, the call came, and you know, uh, I called Jake and I said, "Listen, I have that call," and um, we were in middle of something else, and I said, "I got, I've got to go to Istanbul, uh, hear them out." And uh, the, on the table was a three-year deal. And uh, I said to Jacob, I'm going to take that deal. And, and you, had a, you had a great year. You ended up in third place that year, but you signed a three-year deal. Then all of a sudden, your, your, your current team, Cheska, comes calling. It was, it was even, even, even more like we, we, couldn't, we couldn't imagine we're going to have such a run in, uh, in Turkish League. We were playing against uh, um, Galatasaray, that is EuroLeague team. Uh, FS obviously is a EuroLeague team, and Fenerbahce is a EuroLeague team with a new coach and a great coach. So at that at that year, Bandi had a run. We had a run. I don't remember anymore. Like I think that we were like 22 or 24 all undefeated in in Turkish league, and we finished first in the standing on the regular season. Uh, like uh, and that was all of a sudden something we need to deal with. Like Bandi. Is already winning twice against Venner, twice against Galatasaray, twice against the FES, Euroleague teams, and all of a sudden we're over there. I said, okay, like we need to calm a little bit and realize that that's not the real story. Those guys that are playing also Euroleague. We were playing Euro Cup. We were eliminated from Euro Cup the second phase. So we had more of a time to prepare the game, like seven days to prepare one game. You know that's it's not the same uh, when you have also something in between. Uh, yeah, and yes, that, that, for a player, that's a lot of practice, man. We hated that. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I tried it to balance a little bit, but uh, to be honest, it's worth to say uh, my, my, my dear friends from Bandwit, uh, even though Bandwit now is shut down as a club, I have a great relationship with the owners and of course my president, Oskar Kilic, and uh, my GM and uh, general man and, 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 uh, and uh, uh, Turgay Chetaloluk and uh, uh, Turgay Zentigos. But my president and the owner's uh, brother, Gerner, 
after the offer of CSK came, I remember as yesterday, we had a, a breakfast where I announced them, listen, uh, it was also other teams. It was Basconi again coming. It was other teams that they were calling, but I had two years contract value, two more year contract. Yeah. So I go to my president and it was, we had a breakfast in a, in a, in a nice area in Bandirman. And I said, we have that offer. And, uh, you know, I know we have, I have two more years contract. We're going to try to find a deal. And he took a paper, man. And he just like rub it like that. I said, contract? You know, pop, pat. It doesn't exist. And I was like, wow. a, 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 a brother will not allow me that, you know, but you yeah, could yeah, have, yeah. I mean, Bandwit could have asked whatever, like, okay, here's business. I we understand we, we have you for another two years. We, we call you before when you were in sabbatical and, but they gave me that opportunity and I, I will never forget that. So, and, um, you know, uh, obviously, uh, CSK had to and paid some amount, but that's not the that's not the story. The story is how they they said you can go, yeah, they made be free, it. and we're going to be proud actually going to such a great organization, uh, such a great uh, club. From the first year, you've been to the Final Four. You haven't missed the Final Four, which is which is amazing to me. But the the first one you go into in the Cheska, your new team, your new club, you, 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 keep, you keep Ted Ostrich, you, you bring Nicolo in, and you put a team together that, that you put your team together. And, and let's, let's get right into it. Let's get, because you know I'm going to come after you about this a little bit, as I always right. do. Let's do it. Olympiacos had, or I should say, Cheska had this fame of blowing leads in big games. Number one, obviously you go back to the finals against Olympiacos. Then there was a, the Maccabi Tel Aviv also, but mostly it's against Olympiacos. Your first final four, you play Olympiacos and you blow a nine point lead with four minutes to go. And, and of course, all of us, now, now I can't say that I'm not here anymore. So we all talk about the ghosts, you know, in, in Cheska's locker room. There, and, there are no ghosts. Well, there, well there, let, I'll tell you, but, but the, your question is, is is fair enough, but there are no goals. Uh, there are no goals. I don't believe in that. I mean, there maybe there are goals out there. I don't know. There are no goals about that part of that. TSK blowing uh, big leads or from Olympiacos or so whatever. But uh, this is good narrative that works for Olympiacos uh, players to you know like motivation gives a motivation that that narrative and this this kind of a story where the poor ones those are the, the rich ones let's let's that let's get them that's that's a good story i give them that that's a good story but you know probably is you know you got think a little bit out of the box and think a little bit uh, different like say this guy is well known about that also before me coming over here because yeah, yeah. this guy was always in final fours so right. you're always going to mention that thing. That's also a good story, you know. You don't mention the other teams that they lost the the big difference because probably this happened during the season or happened in a in a in a regular season in a in domestic league. A lot of teams losing uh, uh, big lead, lead, leads, but Ceska is on the spotlight because he's always in the spotlight. Right. So Ceska is an issue, of course, is is an issue because he's always on the spotlight because they have teams and they have a management that they have a. Uh, experience and they're, they're always over there and yes that's a great story and that's a great narrative for for myself coming over there and on my first final four as you said as a head coach on my first final four facing Olympiacos and uh, Spanulis is making amazing shots uh, Boronchi is defending the people they ask me would you do this the same of course it was not a problem because after the final I spent this, this the people that don't know, and you gotta ask your friend Papa Lucas mm -hmm. why you have to ask him because he took pictures of that night. Actually, early morning, I'm sitting with Spanulis, Zisis until uh, maybe six or seven o'clock in the morning. We haven't slept, and Papa Lucas all of a sudden comes around three and he says, Wow, and he started taking pictures of, of us, like me with Spanulis and Zisis, like talking. And we were talking about that. You know, we were talking about this game and that game and how is the final four is one game. You know, everybody can win everybody. And especially like when you're in the zone, that was not a problem. Uh, Spanul is, is a great player. He can make shots. The problem was we were not scoring. <laughs> the problem is that we, offensively, we were not scoring with the mismatches and the switches that we're, we're doing. So Sasha Cowan, all of a sudden he became white. I said, not, not again, not again. I said, not, what, what not again? It's you playing against 
a shorter guy. It doesn't matter. With all the respect to the players, they did a great job. And they yeah. won, and I congratulate Olympia Cross. That's a, that's another st st story, but the problem was we were not scoring. Not we were not we were getting baskets back then. It was top baskets. Like when you as a coach, when you uh, you know preparing the game, you say we can live with those sh shots. Yeah. If the shots are contested, you know last second shots, you you have a hand on it, we can live with those shots. Am I right? But you got to score something out there. But that was a that, that was a great story because uh, uh, back then, uh, you know, you need only not to handle yourself and your, the players living in these probably fairy tales or ghosts. So you got to be the one telling them that there are no ghosts. You, you need okay. to convince them, convince them that there are no ghosts. And thank God we convinced everybody uh, that there are no ghosts. And we won uh, the next year with almost the same group of people. Uh, yeah, yeah, but the, but, but the in the following year the ghost still existed because you were up by twenty in that game, and twenty one actually. Well, you're but, twenty one. All right, 20 I'll, I'll, I'll go a little bit behind on uh, two thousand nine. It was Panathinaikos that he was leading, and I was a, a member of the coaching staff that we were leading right. plus twenty three <laughs> against CSK. Right. So the same CSK you're talking about, you know, it's about journalists or media or whoever tries to make a narrative and that's a good narrative I, I mean i have nothing against you know me that you i'm know, we, inside we need stories we need stories all right so do stories <laughs> and whoever buys the stories is all right i mean nothing against but when we're working from inside it's the same story so panathinaikos had lost that lead from csk and we came to the last shot of shishkowskis so right. the story could be written differently if shishkowskis would make that shot then we would say hey we do this they don't know what they're doing why they didn't foul that last shot so but the story is written different. But Panathinaikos was losing the, 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 the big margin. Am I right? Yeah. yeah is there yeah. any ghost out there? So CSKA is coming back. So CSKA in, in, a, in a previous Final Four, against the big uh, uh, lead of FS, we came back to that one shot. So can we write the narrative now a little bit different? Or it comes only to Olympiakos? So when, when CSKA is facing Olympiakos? Well, no, I mean, it, 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 it is just because it seems it, it has that, that, that aura ab about it that every time, not every time, but a lot of times that Olympiagos and Cheska faced each other before you, after you, during you, whatever. Well, not, I don't know about after because you're still there, but it happened. And, 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 and but I, I wanted, I want to talk about that, the, 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 the winning year, the 2015 16, because that was, that was my first final four I did as a as like on site commentator and and man you guys it, it was like the greatest show on earth to to watch that game um but again, I mean you can't tell me coach, and you and I have a good enough relationship to be able to say this to each other. I knew this interview was going to go this way now. you can't tell me that when you're up twenty one in that third quarter and well you're actually up sixteen, I think going into the fourth also, if I remember correctly. And you and and Bobby Dixon started going up. You can't tell me that in your mind you weren't thinking that, that. Oh my God, it's happening again. No, not one second. Not even one second. Not the if you if you go back then, it's it's basketball. It's why it happens. It's you got to find your why. Your why, and you got to find your why also in your life. Why are you doing that? What are you doing? Yeah. Did you find your why in your, for yourself? Like you go go outside after that, uh, uh, probably you did that with your with your mirror, and you said, "I'm doing that because of that." Why I'm doing that? So we need to find the why also why this is happening in this certain game, and it was happening this and that because of that and that and that. So, but if something exists, and I, I said uh, uh, out loud, then we probably curse all this. So I want to just I, I believe that it doesn't exist. But I wanted to say for the others that doesn't exist. So we had the big lead, we lost the big lead, and we won Fenerbahce in overtime. So okay, now the ghosts are gone, all right? So let's think about basketball. It's the ghosts are not playing. Tradition is not playing. You know, at the same time, we have lost also big margins against Olympiacos in the regular season, uh, regular season game, and we won those games. So. Or other 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 teams uh, that lost a uh, big margin and they, they won games. So that's that's basketball. Like all of a sudden, twenty points is not is not a safe thing to sit tight and think about probably how you're going to raise the trophy. That's the problems. 
that you need to go through deeply with the players. Why this happened in their mind? The the thing is, you guys play you play each other so much that everything's bound to happen. But I, I want to talk about like dreams a little bit. Like when I was a kid, I dreamed about being first. Of, first of all, I dreamed about being a baseball player. That didn't come through because my father wanted me to go study and play basketball. So I, I chose his path that way. And then my dream became to play in the NBA. And when I played in the NBA, the dream you know, is when I when I speak to kids, I always speak about the fact that you know the the dream is is to play in the NBA, but when you get there, you don't know what's going to happen. I sat on the bench the whole time. I was, you know, I hardly ever played. I was, I became the big fish. You know, I went from the big fish at, at school to the little fish. But the, the dream isn't always the reality when you get there. And I don't know if you dreamt or if you thought about or you Zelko sat down and talked about playing a championship game against each other. But the first time you guys met in the final four atmosphere it was for third and fourth consolation. It's kind of like, man, do we, this isn't what we really talked about, is it? <laughs> we, we, we never actually talked about that. Never, never, ever. Uh, maybe we, one day we would, we would uh, have that, we would open that discussion uh, after some shivas and, and, uh, and uh, we, don't, we can don't talk to about Zelko and shivas, please. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, actually the first game, I can tell you from my side, probably Jelka too, it was emotional. The first game it was in Bandrum. When we, after 13 years being together, we faced each other like, okay. So it was, but in order to uh, make it easier, uh, I like usually I call him for a dinner the, the, the night before. So we had a nice dinner. He came with his assistant coaches. I had my assistant coaches and we had a good group over there. We enjoy good fish and everything. We talk a lot, laugh a lot, but then he comes again. And then, you know, so we, we gave that hug and it was a little bit emotional, that hug uh, before the game. So, and then you, you try to help your team. Like he tries to help his team. I try to help my team and, uh, and you're playing and you, you, you don't, it doesn't cross your, through your mind, all these things that happened, you know, 13 years, you, you're trying to leave the moment. So, in, in, but as you said, on this game for the third place, which I believe that, we need slowly to, you know, eliminate. Hey, 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 don't don't get me in trouble, coach. I've been trying. No, no, I'm, I'm not getting here. you in trouble. I've been you trying. You have to answer. I'm answering. I, I'm saying, I've, and I'm saying that loud. So, I've been trying to get rid of that game since I had to play it in Paris in 1996, and it's just like, oh my lord. Yeah, but, it's but, not but, easy for the players. I don't, you guys face each other in the championship on 2015-16 in Berlin, and that, that, like I said, it was it was an amazing game. But my question, I guess, is, is I have it written down here. Let, let me read it. It was May 13th, 2016, about 11 p.m. Berlin time, when you watched him beat Basconia. And you knew that at that point, because you had already won the earlier game, that, that, that it was set. In the next 36 to 40 hours before tip-off, how much did you, how much Chivas did you guys drink together? How much did you guys communicate? Were there WhatsApp? Were there messages? Was there like... Well, I'll tell you, the fact that we're in the same hotel, it yeah. helped that we met many times. And also EuroLeague and also a Greek journalist, Sotiris Vetakis, had a, he made an interview together with us. Like, and we spent maybe two hours uh, together, you know, also for this documentary of EuroLeague and also for the Greek newspaper or Greek site that he was working to. So we were like, they were filming us with a team and also after that together. So we, we had a joint interview, me and Jelka to, together. So we, we talked a lot be, before the, the final. We, we met a lot. And then after that, we had also some beers, uh, my family, his family. We, we, we were kind of relaxed and everything, of course, obviously, over here, you're thinking yeah, about yeah, the game, yeah. about the tactics, about the tactics, about the tactics, but who would chill out? Yeah. When, when, when Carapa tips in the shot at the end of the game to tie it up at 1.9, I mean, do you just That was a like, relief. That was a relief. That was... Uh, yeah, I mean, that, you, feel you have a whole new life right there. Uh, a whole new life, and uh, I'm happy I said that also uh, clear and loud. If, again, the ghosts, and there were... They were hunting him as well as a person. Like he made a turnover in one final four, made the turnover in the other final. All right. So now it's he that he ties the game. So all right, that's that's great. Then let's 
expel let's let's kick out the the goal so it's, it was a great moment for for victor yeah and yeah. for our team and, and you know that shot that shot is underrated i think in your league history because because that wasn't that wasn't a tap in where the ball was rolling around they always say a tip in that ball wasn't rolling around the rim and he no no it. exactly it he was caught, he caught that oh, with one hand uh, and he was, and he was like a meter away and that's not an easy shot. That was it's one of the most underrated shots, I think, in Euroleague history. You know, we always see the princesses, the the shot against Jessica, and, and you see those shots, but that that was one of the most it, the only thing it, it didn't win the game, but it did in the long run, it did win the game, but in overtime. Yeah, yeah. He gave us a new life, as you said. He and and I have life. to I have to ask you, was there <laughs> you're gonna hate me for this question. Was there a mo was there a moment during that game like man if we lose this game I might I might not have my job after losing two years in a row I haven't thought about that but probably the probably the probably it could happen but I haven't thought about that at that moment I'm just I'm just thinking how we're gonna win the game no 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 I, I don't we, have a but time even, to even after even afterwards you were like man if he doesn't make that tip in he's like these guys I'm, how, I'm you don't have time to think about that at least I don't have time. I don't know if somebody else had the time to think about it. You don't have. At that moment, you're just, when I get into the gym, uh, believe me or not, I'm focused on 10 players, a ball. Sometimes I see the referees. I don't see people. I don't see anybody. Yeah, 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 of course. It's, yeah. it's such a, all of a sudden, all these area strings, it becomes like 10,000, 15,000 spectators, whatever, to a 10 and a ball. Isn't, and the ball. Isn't, isn't isn't that an amazing feeling that like even you can walk out of the gym when you're done and you don't even remember like the fans that were there or, and yeah and, you, 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 I don't know if you if you saw that the, the, the movie Kevin Costner is acting and he's a baseball player and uh, uh, feel the dreams was it feel something the like that when he, when he says they were booing him when he was going New York playing and he's ready to either throw or defend or whatever and he says. To himself, clear the mechanism. Clear the mechanism. And all of a sudden, in the movie, it was ah, crowding here. And all of a sudden, it's go going silence. Shh. Focus. Ball throwing this. Uh, yeah. you're, you're out. You're in, you're in your space. So I like that. I like that word. And I gave you from where it comes from. Clear the mechanism. So you're clearing the mechanism and you just like be focused. I like that. The, the, and I don't want to go back and get this, but the following year, you, two years in a row, you go back to the Final Four. You run into the Spanulis train again, Olympiacos in 2017-18. Yeah. And you guys, you guys blow another again, lead. the ghosts are coming. You know? <laughs> <laughs> let's, call them, let's call them, they went from ghosts to demons. No, they, so, listen, uh, that's the Final Four, actually. That's the Final Four. You could I know, I know. It's so, it's so difficult to win this league. It's but, what, but it's what it makes it so special. Also, I, 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 I. All right, let's let's come to the special. Uh, I, I disagree that it's not a special if you're going to win a series of game of best of five into a final uh, against Real Madrid or against Fenerbahce or against Olympiacos or whoever is going to play that final. So I think that also that is special. So we're mature enough to go to that towards to yeah. this direction. Um, and uh, actually for me, for you, for many coaches and players, the, the good thing and what we have to pray is for is many teams to follow Cesca, Milano, Real, Barcelona to reach this kind of uh, budgets. So we have even more and more, more teams that they invest to that level, not Cesca, Milano and uh, to FS and uh, to go yeah. down. And to say, okay, we're going to have an equal. No, we need to have more expansion. We need to have more people that they are they're investing and bring great players into the system. So this is something what we all, as coaches, as as journalists, we need to pray for. So in that final four in in uh, in, uh, in uh, Belgrade, the narrative for us is totally different, my man. You may go to this direction again. Only Pierre calls this, but that's not the story. The story is that we have a playoff series against Himke, a very tough series that we have uh, injured Kyle Hines and Nando De Colo. So I'm telling you now, you take those two significant players out of each and every team, how are they going to perform in the playoff? 
Right now we're talking, uh, we are what, like 20th of October of uh, 2021. I'm missing, uh, my team is missing Grigonis, uh, Sengelia, and Milutinov. Yeah. Those are the three starters of each and every EuroLeague team, like also in my team. So the narrative, I'm going back to Belgrade, it was different. I got Nando De Colo and Kyle Hines with no games playing. They come straight to the final four. Nando's first shot is an air ball. You go <laughs> and look at that. So Nando De Colo make an air ball. Yeah, or he has a right to do an air ball, but that's not him. You, you can't put a player, you were a player. You can't put a player immediately to the final four. What is my decision to be? Not to get him in the final four? No, obviously. That's what also Real Madrid was doing with the, after the injury of Lou. Yeah. How Lou cost them or not cost them in the final four in Basconia coming off the injury and probably having over there Corsair playing that he was on fire. That was a decision you got to make, you know? So our narrative, it was not the ghosts. I, I'm more about being talking serious about basketball. So basketball, we had those two guys being absent. And all of a sudden they come back and on the fifth, on the fourth game of the playoff, my point guard get injured. Leo Westerman get injured. He can't play the final four. Not only that, Voronchevich gets, and after 20 seconds, he got injured. So that's the narrative of the final four in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Belgrade. So, and, uh, you know, or in Istanbul, it was a different story. So those are the facts that we need to analyze and, and to see. Obviously, uh, there is going to be also the other part of the story that they're going to say about the ghosts. They're going to say about tradition. They're going to say about uh, magic. Uh, they're going to say about, I don't know what. But I'm more talking about basketball. So when, it, when a team is healthy, uh, how he can compete. And when a team misses significant parts, how he can compete. We're not giving up. We're competing. But still, there are uh, facts that we have to talk and put on the table. This is this is going to be the, my favorite part of the interview, okay? Because because we get the Victoria, and 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 you come from behind. If we want to talk about narratives again, like you're talking about, yeah. you come from 14 down in the third quarter, Real Madrid. I remember you changed things up pretty much on the fly in the third quarter. You went with I think with a smaller team, and and you just totally took Madrid's momentum away, and and you took them out of your game. And it seemed like you responded to everything that they that they did. And then the next night, well, two nights later, you, you face the hottest team in the, in the EuroLeague by far, Ephes, who is, I mean, they won the league that year. They went from, well, from almost, well, they did win. The, they won the regular season, I think. And, and you controlled that game throughout. It was like a boxing match, you know? It was like they just kept, they, they kept throwing punches at you guys. And they kept coming back every time you took the game away from them. They, they, or every time they took it away from you, you would regain the game. And I don't know if you remember this, but man, I was announcing this game. I walked up to you in the in, in behind the scenes. I didn't bother you when you because your you, your expression on the court was just priceless, man. The way you just like with Kai's, with with the, you know the president, with your family. I mean, you, you're just you're just such a gracious winner. It's so great to watch. But I waited. I gave you your moment. I took you off to the side. And I gave you a big hug, and I said, Coach, I said. That was the best effing coaching job I've ever seen in my life. And I'm talking about both games. And that's where you got rid of the ghost, if you ask me. That's where you got rid of the demons. That's where you got rid of all that bullshit. They're going to get mad at me for saying that, that, that followed it. Because you, you could have lost both of those games very easily. And you, the job that you did was, to me, was the best coaching job that I've seen so far in any Final Four. And I want you to just talk about those those two games. Well, thank you for, for your good words. And uh, actually, the narrative starts a little bit earlier uh, when we play the playoff series against Basconi. Oh, that's and, right. I, you know, I forgot to punch, look at that. Exactly. The punch we get, because we had, a, 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 a let's say, a normal, a good game, first game, we, we blow them. And then it comes a second game that they tie the series. Right. And then we have to go back to play Basconi at their home court on the final four court on the final four court yeah with a crazy great spectators over there they have and a crazy atmosphere and uh, this is where the, the, the that, that punch and that fall made us realize who we are and 
And going out there and have Nando playing great game, have Will playing great game, Corey playing game, great game, Kyle or everybody, you know, Othello, you know, everybody, each and everyone, Danny Hackett. Um, you know, that brought us together. And it was, again, the narrative out there. Ceska never lost in the a home, never was tight. Now they're going out there. We're the underdogs. We're, you know, the, the haters. You remember that I was talking about here? They said, give us a little bit more of a haters. That's what we want to do. <laughs> we want that. You know, those guys that they tap in your back and say, you're the best, you're the most beautiful, you're the greatest. Well, wow, that's that's a distraction, man. Like, give yeah. us a little bit more of a haters. So and that was what really made us. Uh, that what galvanized, as I said, our character. That's what actually made us who we are, instill into our souls and our hearts that we're – we're going to go out there. And we had our leaders playing great games. Talking out about the Final Four, as you mentioned it, uh, and I, I never thought about that, but um, I do remember about your heart. I do remember everything what you said. And I'm, I was really, you know, um, honored. And, and uh, I told you that also over there. And, uh, you know, we never came back in a game against Madrid with a quick run of 11-0 or 10-0 or something that, that this happened in the game. We were coming in slowly, slowly. Right, slowly. right. And the fact that we had Chacho Rodriguez, that he actually took the team from, if I may say, like a young kid, like you took a, a young kid from the head and you, you led him to the first year of the school. This is how Chacho uh, comes out of the bench with a minus 14 yeah. and takes our team and says, we can do it. Coach, we can do it. Players, we can do it. You know, he, and he, he's just given that. He, he's just given that. And I'm, I'm bringing his name out because it's hard for the player, and I understand that. But we need some coaching out there. So why I'm saying this? Because Chacho was ready. He understood when I came the day after when we prepared the final. And having Will injured, because Will a Clyburn, the, 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 the future uh, uh, final, uh, final for MVP, he got twisted his ankle, uh, and his his foot is like that, swelling. And I go to Chacho and say, "Listen, Chacho, uh, without you, we would not make that final, fi final. You know, but now with the matchups we have, Larkin and Mitchies and everything, maybe you're gonna play limited time." And then he was like, <laughs> "You know, like that's not easy for the player. He was just the hero of the semifinal." You know, but I, 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 plus, plus he had had a reputation of not playing well against Madrid. So, so that was that was even more special for him because he, without him, he, this thing. I mean, we're talking about the the shot of uh, of uh, Victor, and he, yeah. it's one of the best shots. And we say this guy has to remember forever, and and Victor forever. But uh, Chacho Rodriguez was the X factor in that that yeah. game. He took yeah. the team, as I said, as a young kid from the said, "Hey, listen, we can do it." Right. As a minus fourteen is nothing. I'm here, and. Uh, and all of a sudden, and, and finally, he did not play that, that much of a minutes. But when, when I hugged him and I, and I told him how much important it is to understand that and not to make faces, but not to, but to lead also with, by, by example. And uh, being at the side, and now, I don't know, let Corey, ha Corey Higgins shine or, or Will Clyburn shine or Nando DeColo shine, or, you know, and himself. And in that final, as you said, we took twice or three times the lead, but plus 13. It was specific because if you hear my timeouts in each and every, I'm sorry, F quarter, uh, uh, Larkin is making the, the buzzer shot. He's making a three-pointer. I said, can, you, can we give him at least two-pointer, guys? Like, I mean, yeah. enough. Like, he's making a three-pointer. Not only that, they take the lead on the, on the, on the third quarter. They take the right. lead. But right. we came back again, and I think we were, we were a better team down stretch, and we won a, um, a very important final four for CSK and for, for our team. Let, let, let me get into let's get away from let me get into some personal stuff and then we'll do this test that we have to do with you. I love your test. Yeah, yeah. You didn't know you didn't read your email that there was going to be a test. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I read the email. Yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, Pablo wrote, wrote about the questions. Yeah. God damn it. Should I open my iPad and maybe click? No, uh, no, 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 no. You can't Google. You can't Google. All right. I, I love the quote that you say you cannot deny a player is right to make mistakes. But I want you to explain explain it to the listeners exactly what that means. Well, can you can you phrase it again? So you cannot deny a player to his right to make them to make. How you can deny to a player that he's playing out there in a 
out of his comfort zone. That's not his comfort zone. And this is all why, practice. Why, why isn't it? Why isn't it his comfort zone? He's playing. He's playing in basketball. Because he got probably the referee that didn't see the foul. The the player that he's all over him. The fans are booing him. Coach is on him, and he's making but a mistake. Like, but that's all part of the game, coach. That's all it part is. of it. But you can't it. deny him to have a mistake. Then you, if you deny him having a mis mistake and going to the perfection, then we're talking about probably IT uh, guys or PlayStation guys or whatever. Like in, in, in real life, you got to do mistakes. You don't repeat the same mistakes. You, you, you don't forgive yourself if you repeat the same mistakes. Right. That's another story. Those are, those, those are two different things. <laughs> those are two different things. Yeah. But you cannot deny a player to have a mistake or to have a mis misjudgment. Uh, you practice them, hopefully, out of their comfort zone in practices and doing stuff on practices or bring them to the limits. You know, talking over here, Kyle Hines was, I was forced to, to take him out of the practice, Kyle Hines. That probably he never had a, a, a nobody kick him out of a practice because he was frustrated. He wanted to play the game yesterday. He wanted to say, you know why? Because I brought them to the line where I, with the motivation, I had some pictures. I don't want to mention our names. And Kyle Hines says, you know, coach, you you're 100 right. I want to play that game yesterday. I can't wait tomorrow to play that game. I, I'm I'm seeing that face on the locker room that you put, and we went there and we won that game. So I understand the player. I understand him, how, how, he, he, how he, he feels. I have an empathy for yeah. that. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to coach or I'm not going to take him out of the, uh, to the bench to calm him, calm him out. But you can't deny him to have the right to have a mistake. An, an, another quote is, Obradovich not only changed the way that I see basketball, but he changed my life. It did. It, that, it, that's a true story. He, he well, did because... It, it, because he had something which I, I did not have. I didn't play a high quality basketball in a high level. And he he was a player and he had this, you know, when I when we came together in Panathinaik, of course, I give you that story just to to understand. We had a Patrick Burr, lefty, big. A man, big Pat. I love Pat. Pat. So Pat comes to me to assistant coach to ask for a, you know, coach, he said, do you think that I can ask for a coach like uh, a, a day or two to go to state, something with his girlfriend or something that was going on. So are you crazy? We're playing tomorrow against Papavos. I, I don't remember. I, I, with all the respect to Papavos, whoever we would play at that moment were that big, we would have win that game. But I was like strict. No, 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 don't go and, and, and ask that. You know, I mean, you, you have no right to go in states now and you're going to go lose in two days over there, two days over here. Going. That was our first season. Two, uh, I was 29 years old, right? So I go to Jayco after one practice. I said, listen, this Pat is, you know, he's having some demands like going to States. And I said, okay, let him go. So what do you mean let him go? So let him go. And he said, call Pat. So he calls Pat in the office and said, uh, Dimitris told me that you are, you have a request. He says, yeah, yeah, coach, but no problem. I understand. It. Take seven days. He says, like, <laughs> so, come on. What? And then Pat goes fully satisfied. Of course, he got a grant. I mean, he's granted to go. Right. He said, How, are you stupid? He says, like, we give him like five days. He's gonna give us like, like more than hundred percent when he comes back. And that was a right. That, that was a right lesson. You, you see, you, you got a lesson out of a conversation. I was like, for this, like more strict. You know, like to go to states now. No, but he says give him seven days. Of course, he took he took five days, but he came out like like a lion. Right. He says okay, coach understands the situation. So this is where. Uh, there are certain other things that we we work in Panathinaikos, which I'm trying to, uh, you know, to implement over here. And we did uh, manage to do it. Like we had a player in a video, and you know, my voice is a little bit loud. You can't sleep when I'm when I'm talking in in, in video. But a, a great player, he fall asleep in a in a morning session of a video. Come on, give uh, me the name. Give me the name. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, you know, it, and then Mike goes and, and try to wake him up. I said, no, no, something. But so what I'm saying that it was not a punishment. It was after that a family gathering and said, okay, this will cost you a dinner. So that player had to make a dinner for all of us because he fell asleep. Obviously, he had he had a reason why he fell asleep. But right. I'm just saying, like you know, you you growing up um, and you gain experience. Experience you go, you can't go out there and buy it. Right. You can't ask for it. You, you you have to experience it. You have to face it. You gotta get a punches. 
and uh, and this is how it, it, it was so he changed my life and he, he changed my, my way of seeing the basketball we're, we're in the same group then because i don't know if he changed my way he changed my way of seeing basketball by far but but he definitely changed my life and and in in the way that i saw somebody demand so much from me in 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 a very demanding and very very difficult manner but still have the respect for me as a person outside the court and we're, we're like coach Obradovich was the only coach that that yelled at me where i didn't dislike him after the the practice was over you know what i mean there was times where i went home like oh that mother guy god i'm gonna, you know, gonna kill him you know but but he taught me that 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 to win championships it's all about details it's all about the little things and i think I carry that into like trying to be a better person over over your life. It's all about the little things, it's all about the details that that are really most important. So in, in that aspect, we're we're identical because he changed he changed my vision on so many different things, and it made me realize I, that, that I, I can, can be put, you proudly that I can be pushed to my limits. Right. I can be pushed to my limits, right, and, and become better. I can say to you proudly that I'm privileged because I helped. We were. Um, we had it both ways, that 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 thing. And I, I'm I'm saying to you proudly that I was over there to influence him as well in in many in many things. And he's enough of a man uh, with enough balls to to admit that thing. And that's the uh, the the greatness into all this. You uh, you don't need. And also, this is my the way I'm picking assistants, like to being challenged, like not not to being to to being challenged every day. With the facts, like this is the way. That's the way. So uh, basketball can be that way, or, or and uh, this is um, what makes you be, want to become better. You know that you every day you're driven, like you said. You said it co uh, correct, pushing you to the limits. Yeah. Like what are those limits? Probably there are no limits out there. If you if you have this possession of, you know, I don't know everything. There is something out there. I, I'm saying to you now, clear and loud. I don't know. I, I I know I'm missing something. I'm yeah. gonna learn it. I'm still young, as you said. I'm gonna learn it. I have so many books to go and so many colleagues to to learn something out of players. But yeah, we, there is we, something we, out there. We learn every day. If if you're if you're open minded and your eyes are open and your ears are open, you know we learn we learn every. That's why they say that. That's why they say that they gave us that God gave us one mouth and two ears so we can listen yes. more than we speak. You know. Yes. Is, yes. You, you, do you think your personality? Because I mean, you're you're such a uh, to me, you're such a class act. You know, people could think other people could think what they want, but you've always been a class act for me on and off the court. In and and your your demeanor with people and the way you like to talk to people, players especially before you sign them. Does this all come? Does this all come from the farm? Does this all come from mom and dad and and like you, like um, what you grew up with? Well, definitely the the principles you get from your family are very important. Uh, the environment you grew up and the um, uh, the the, the valids and uh, the ethics, uh, you know, my father uh, taught me uh, and my mom that you need to respect out there people. You need to respect no matter what is their name, their size, their color, their knowledge, um, their pocket, also whatever. You need to respect people, and they they have to respect you back. If they don't respect you back, give them a second chance. You know, if they don't see it, if they if you see no respect, you gotta walk away or something. So that's what I, I, I talk to my daughter. Respect is a very important thing. You, you know, we, we used to say that, but uh, respect is a very important thing. Uh, and you need to respect um, uh, everything will happen. You need to respect the game at the end of the day. You need to respect the game in order the game to respect you back. Uh, you need to respect your, your, your teammates, your opponents, and you need to respect everybody. So I start from that base. And yes, it comes from that form. But obviously and uh, undoubtedly, uh, you are who you are each and every one of us getting the opportunities that given in, in life to get lessons and to become and an, an add something add a brick add another brick in your construction of life that uh, will eventually brings you somewhere you know why i'm not um, remembering things uh, that often because i believe that i'm not close to retirement i, I still have <laughs> something to give i believe i don't know that if i go back and see albums or seeing back games or something i feel like 
I'm close to retire or I'm close to, you know, it's always good to have fond memories. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's always good to have fond memories because, and my fond memories are coming and my oxytocin is over there. I'm sorry, going to terminology of psychologists, but my oxytocin is, is rising up with fond memories when I, when I remember the hardship we have to right. share. So this is when people are coming really close. And this is what is all about basketball is about team sport. Uh, I mean, it's about all team effort, like how you can get something from this guy, from that guy. So uh, I think that we all um, in life, we have opportunities. We just to grab it uh, and try to work with, with them uh, the best way we can. You need, to, you need to recognize them first. That's what I always tell people. When I recognize yeah. opportunities, then go get them. But you, you mentioned that your dad had a heart attack before before you signed with Pana. Are your parents still alive? Yeah, they're still alive. Thank God. Uh, my, 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 my dad had an open surgery and he uh, had a, two heart attacks. One when he had to make the open surgery uh, uh, when I was a student in Zagreb and the second in 99. Uh, but they're still alive and um, they're proud uh, parents. And I'm, you know, I'm proud of them, too. And and talk about your family. Like you're you're one of the coaches that I see. It, it's so it has to be so hard to to be a wife of a coach. You know, I I mean it it's difficult to be a wife of a player, yeah. but it's got to be so difficult to be a wife because a player can turn it off when they go home, you know, and just like forget it. I'm not between the four lines and spend time with my family. Coaches can't, don't, they don't have that ability. And, and whenever I see you out there, Final Fours, games, whatever, I always see you with your wife. I think that's really a special thing. And, and it's so hard, man, to, 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 for a I woman mean, to take that role. Maria is special. Uh, you know, I admit, uh, without, without, without her and without her support and, 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 uh, and knowledge he has about life and uh, uh, respect he has towards others and respect he has... Uh, in general, about my uh, my job and the time I'm spending to uh, to job and the, the fact, as you said, that a, a coach cannot switch off, yeah. uh, not that often. Uh, you know, she might said to me to do something, and I'm thinking of pick your all defense, and she just said, I, I, just, I just said to you, <laughs> all right, yeah, but you know, uh, I was distracted. Uh, and she's special. She's special because she's um, she has very uh, high moral. Uh, she's a fighter in life. Uh, she had a lot of um, a, a lot of adversities to fight. Uh, also, health I issues that she fought twice or three times in life. And uh, she's a fighter. And uh, he, he, uh, it's not a coincidence. In, in our house, this is what it is. It's about fight. It's about struggle. It's about you being alive. You lead something. Uh, uh, when you lead something, you gotta be ready for solving problems. That's what what is about le uh, leading. Uh, you have to be ready to solve problems. You have to be uh, ready to help people, to assist others. So that's my why in life. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said before, we got to find out what is the why. Why are you doing that? All right, before I'm we... grateful to them, man. And I love her and, uh, yeah. and uh, as my daughter. So thank you for that question. No, no, I, I love seeing you guys together. And it was uh, my pleasure meeting her. I met, we met her at Coach Eplitz's uh, retirement party. And unfortunately, he just recently yeah. passed and we miss him dearly. But um, yeah, family is just so, so important. I have one last question before you, before the hard part. And I know this is, this, I'm going to give you one question before I got the five test questions. Give me three players that you cannot, in, throughout your whole career, that you cannot go without, that you have to have on the team? Wow. And I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the most talented players. I'm not talking about the best players. I'm not talking about, you know, the, the MVPs. I'm talking well, about... Well, definitely from the beginning, uh, you, Bodiroga was the one that, you know, you have difficulties, just give him a ball, man. Yeah. You, you have difficulties, just give the ball to Dan and he's going to find it out. You, you give him the, the ball with a back to the basket. You give him the ball with a face to the basket. People that believe that he can't shoot, he's going to shoot. He's going to make that shot. He's going to make his pump fake and go by God, you. Um, God, it, God, it was an ugly shot, though, wasn't it, Coach? Yeah, a little bit ugly shot, but he's making the shots. <laughs> yeah. Ugly shot, but he's practicing much and he has a lot, a lot of character out there. So Dan was the one that you feel secure that he's going to make it happen. Uh, so just give him a ball. And, I and one. One. 
um, uh, other players that I used to coach or I played against too. No, no, no. That, that you that you coach that you like. I got. I, he's got to be in my locker room. He's got to be on my court. He's got to be on my bench. He's got to be. Well, I, I I had the privilege to coach great players, man. I mean, uh, Nando De Colo and Milos Teodis are one of those uh, that you you know they uh, Milos is is watching ahead of, of, of the play. You know, he's watching some of the passes ahead. So this is where he's making most of his turnovers because he believes that also the others can follow this what he sees ahead. So Ornando with his cold blood and his professionalism, uh, but I can't I can't say that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm any gonna, of those guys. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Give, I'm gonna give you number three. It's not about number three. So Will Clyburn is is it's everything for for, yeah. for it's it's a living example of how the from a, a kid. Uh, grown up to a, a leader uh, and, and establishing a career and still growing and still uh, evolving. Kyle Hines is, an, an, is a living a, a, that's, example. That's, that's the one I thought for sure. Would yeah, be it's, it's a living example, man, with his uh, adversities. He's undersized. Uh, you know, yeah. whom I, I can't take out uh, Mike Batiste. Also a, a great story about to talk about. So That's why I told you it was an impossible question, didn't I? It, it, it is an impossible question. I can I mention like uh, hundreds of them. I fell in love with with Kyle like so many times, man. Because I've seen him do so many things that 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 make him way more of a person than he is a player, and that that's why I've always I've always respected him, and and that's it. But all right, let's do this, man. We got five questions. Okay. Each one is worth the amount of points that. So question number one is worth ten points. Question number two is worth twenty points. Three thirty four forty five fifty. All right. I think. If I remember correctly, no one informed me this before, but I think Grigonis won last year. I think he, I think he won the. Uh, I'll be completely honest with you. I watched that part because Pablo sent me that part, and I watched Grigonis uh, answer think, correct four out of five or something like that. Yeah, I think he ended up with like seventy points or something. They didn't brief me on this before, and I should remember it. It's my show, but you know, I still, like you said, we need. I need my assistants to help me with these things. Yeah. Uh, are you ready? Here they we go. They don't challenge you enough. They don't challenge you enough. <laughs> Five questions. They go from easiest to hardest. All right. Number one, who was last? Who was the last Final Four MVP? Well, uh, Vasamich. There you go. That's ten points, coach. You're getting off to a good start. How many playoff matchups last year arrived to the fifth game? Uh, last year? Yeah. Uh, the only the only didn't uh, arrive to the fifth game. It was. Uh, it was ours, 3-0 against uh, Fenerbahce. And um, uh, just give me a second. Uh, Real Madrid defense was playing that. You, you, uh, you, 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 essentially, you've answered the question. Yeah, it's only the, the one it's that we four won. series, so yeah. So there you go, so 20 points. Damn, man, you're doing well. I mean, those are the easy ones. So you're up to 30 <laughs> points now. How many years has Asvel played in the EuroLeague since the year 2000? Oh, since the year 2000. Okay, so Villarban since the year 2000. Three. Now, eight, including this one. Wow. Yeah, you got it. I, I would have never. Sorry answered. for Villarban. We played them also with Pau, and I, I, I give like two last and one more with Pau, but obviously it's more. It's more. Question number four with 40 points. What 2021 2022 head coach, this year's head coach, has spent the most years in the Euroleague as a head coach. Oh, uh, go again. Like from from the from the beginning of the Euroleague. Okay. Who has spent the most years as a head coach? Is that me? Not with the same team. Just the. Since oh, the not with the same team. Okay. The same team. I thought beginning. I thought with the same team. Okay. No. So just a second then. Then uh, then it's. Uh, and he's Jacob. No, it's Dus Dusko Ivanovic. Wow, he's, Dusko, yeah. He's in his 18th season as a coach in the Euroleague. Yeah, great. Rafa Dusko. Right, that was that was worth for 40. So now your last one is 50. What former? Oh man, oh, this is a good one. I just saw this one right now. I, I didn't even read this one. What former teammate do Nijad Dedovic, Marco Guderic, and Brandon Davies have in common? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't get the, the first two names. I got the Guderic. 
Nihad Dedovic. Ah, uh, Nedovic. Nihad Dedovic. Okay. okay. Dedovic or Dedovic? Dedovic. Dedovic. Marko Gudovic. Marko Gudovic. And Brandon Davies. And Brandon Davies. Who what former what? teammate do they all have in common? Former teammate they have in common. <laughs> Dedovic. Dedovic play Alba and play uh, Bayern. Uh, Gudovic play Partizan and Fener of obviously NBA. Uh, Davies play Barcelona and Zalgiris. You're getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there, but I'm, I'm trying to realize who is that guy that they had in common because uh, Dedovic is uh, is messing me up. Dedovic is messing me up. I, I, I can't. Wow, who is that? Um, I don't have any help, not neither a phone call like in games, <laughs> like a, a friend that I can give a tip or uh, something. No, no phone or friend, man. No phone or friend. Oh, it has to be somebody that where Davis played the other season, probably. Is that Grigonis? Oh, no, no, he misses. Oh, Vasa Micic, yes, he played. He played yes. Vasa I, I thought you had it, man. I thought you had the 50 pointer. No, I don't 30 know. points, coach. I told you, like, what, uh, what Vasa uh, played with uh, Dedovic together. You got hey, they just give me the questions. I don't know. Yeah. That's what I was uh, I, I, I was about. Like this is the, the, the third guy that it was like making me having doubts we're, about. We're, we're, I, 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 that was a good like, question. That was a good question. I like that. that we're we're gonna double check to make sure, otherwise we're gonna have to give ah, you for sure they're right. They're they're right, they're right. Coach. Uh, I mean I, I call you coach, I call you Demetrius, I call you everything because you're you're I consider you a good friend, man, and, and like I was so excited to do this interview when they when they said, "Hey, let's do Coach Dude is the first one." I was like, "Absolutely, there's no doubt about it. We got to start season four with it." Your your generosity, your respect, your your passion for life, your passion for your team, and the way you always like the way you always credit your team with with victories, just says to me, it says so much about you as as a person, as a coach, and everything. And, and I'm. I, I'm proud to know you. I'm proud to be a part of your life in, in, in an indirect way. And, and thank you so much for being on the crossover, man. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, well, Joe, I, I have uh, the, the so kind words, man. And uh, I, I consider you as a friend and uh, as a living example also for many other uh, young kids. Uh, uh, thank you for having me. I hope that, you know, you understand and also the audience understands that whatever I said, it comes from my heart. And a uh, tremendous respect I have the game to the, towards the game and to the people that they contribute to bring that game to that level. And you're one of them and all the players. So let's let's have this pandemic out of us. Have a let's full James over there, <laughs> enjoying games and evolve the game of basketball, man, and being united. That's that's my dream. It's fun seeing everybody back, man. Coach, I'll see you. I think I'll see you in a few weeks. I, I'm not sure. I think you're coming this way soon, aren't you, into Madrid? Well, we have, I know that we have now the uh, game against Olympiacos at home. Then we have the trip in uh, France for the double you, week. You don't look that far ahead, do you? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I, yeah, to be honest, that's the three game I know now. For now. Good luck, my man. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Joe. Great. Thanks, coach.